everyone. Welcome to Unwet Bee Biology. Our topic today is going to be about movement in multicellular organisms. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to start with blood movement. As you know, uh, blood gives the oxygen, essential nutrients to organs and takes their waste materials and excrete from our organisms. It starts from the um, left ventricle, aorta immerse from left ventricle, takes the oxygenated uh, blood around our body and then comes back to the right atrium and right ventricle and from right ventricle the pulmonary artery goes out from heart to our lungs and gets the oxygen and uh, gives the carbon dioxide. So. This is how blood is actually moving around our body. Muscle cells in moving blood through the heart. Guys, um, our heart is made of cardiac muscle and cardiac muscle only exists in the heart. Cardiac muscle um, is actually it contains cardiac muscle cells which perform highly coordinated actions that keep the heart pumping and um, blood circulating throughout the body body. Unlike our skeletal muscle tissue, uh, just the movements of the cardiac muscle tissue produced involuntarily. So we cannot like, uh, you know, voluntarily um, beat our heart. It beats involuntarily. Uh, cardiac muscle tissue are called myocardium. is a specialized type of muscle and that is only uh, exist in the herd and this is uh, the it contracts and release involuntarily so responsible for the keeping heart pumping blood around the body as you see the cardiac muscle is on the right right in front of the um, here so you can see how the cardiac muscle is actually look like Movement of blood through the arteries and veins. As you know, um, carrying blood around the body is really important. And uh, so for carrying blood from the heart and to the heart, the, the arteries, veins, and capillaries play an important role. You know, the arteries are the blood vessels that carry the oxygenated blood away from the heart. And with the veins, um, on the other hand, or the opposite arteries, they, they carry the deoxygenated blood back to the heart. Actually, they look like they share the same composition, but uh, as you know, pressure in arteries is much more than in veins. And veins has, in some veins, there are actually walls that make sure that the flow of the blood travels to the heart, not backwards. Because um, the pulse can be obtained in arteries because of the high blood pressure, but in veins, we cannot just obtain the pulse. When it comes to capillaries, are the smallest part of the blood vessels, and they operate as a link between arteries and veins, where the exchange of blood and tissue takes place in capillary bed. As, as you see, the arteries and veins, how they look like in the picture. Movement of skeletal muscles. So, guys, skeletal muscles are the muscles that we voluntarily can uh, move our skeletal muscles. And in, in many cases, the skeletal muscles uh, um, contraction maintains body posi position. Uh, for example, holding your he head while watching this lesson is also you know, using your skeletal muscles. Each skeletal muscle consists of hundreds or even thousands of skeletal muscle fibers. They are wrapped and bundled together, as you see here, and in a connective tissue which supports and protects the delicate muscles and also provides pathway for nerves and blood vessels to reach the muscles. Um, the skeletal muscles also need a rich blood supply to provide uh, them with nutrients and oxygen also to function. So, um, muscle movement and ventilation, it's really important and as you know while we are breathing in and breathing out we use our muscles. So. 
here, uh, when we are breathing, there are actually two uh, bands of uh, the muscles that our ribs are actually covered. These are the inter external intercostal and internal intercostal muscles, and also diaphragm takes um, take the action. When uh, muscles are in a relaxed inhalation, when we are in a relaxed state, and when we're breathing, what happens? The external intercostal muscles contract and expand, giving the lungs a bigger room, and while the diaphragm actually goes down and creates a cavity for the lungs to expand. While in exhalation, the uh, internal uh, intercostal muscles contract and shrink, and diaphragm goes up and you know removing the cavity for the lungs and uh, letting lungs to come back to its own state movement in alveolars as you know while the uh, air uh, passing through the trachea bronch bronx and bronchioles uh, the, at the end of the bronchioles we have the alveoli they are covered and um, uh, enclosed with capillaries where the diffusion of gas uh, actually happening so in here as you see the carbon dioxide are getting into alveoli by this way it's going out the oxygen gets into blood through the alveoli in blood vessel membranes. Um, air pollution impact on gas exchange. Today we're going to also talk about the um, cer certain uh, problem that uh, that air pollution cause. One of them is like actually the asthma is an obstructive lung disease. Basically it's hard for the air flow with like air to get out of the um, uh, lungs rather than getting into that one. Also air pollution takes a really important role here causing a lot of respiratory disease. One of them is like it could be the asthma where the um, inflammation of the uh, mucus, there's a lot of mucus and inflammation of the certain membranes or swelling that it doesn't let the air to get out. So here uh, in, in the person with asthma the lungs expand normally and the air usually has no problem traveling into lungs. Lungs. The problem starts because the air cannot get out through narrowed airways, and this causes the asthma attacks, which is really serious. So here, guys, you have got database question: the impact of exposure to, to traffic on indicators of the asthma. So here, uh, there's the Hyde Park in Oxford Street. The Hyde Park is just park with full of trees, and Oxford is actually the place where there is a lot of traffic like before to or uh, before uh, sitting and being here what's your pH level and then after three six or within three six hours what happens to your pH level in your body and also here it is myeloperoxidase uh, what happens to myeloperoxidase do you know that it's very um, harmful thing for uh, our body and our lungs so what happens it in Hyde Park Celeste and Oxford Streets are so this is going to be your assignment you're going to talk about and discuss what we see in the graph so here we have the review questions uh, that how blood moves around the body talk about heart muscles uh, pressure in arteries and veins, function of skeletal muscles, movement in the respiratory organs, gas exchange, and asthma. If you cannot answer one of the questions, go back and review the lesson again. So uh, try to answer all the questions here. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.